To celebrate our 30th wedding anniversary, we're heading to Europe. For 30-something days. Our plans are to explore France, Switzerland, and Belgium over 35 days. And we're capturing it all in this digital scrapbook. We hope you enjoy our retelling of these adventures. This episode we're leaving Zermatt and the Swiss Alps and heading to Geneva. We absolutely love the Swiss Alps. It was probably our favorite part of our entire vacation uh, and we're planning on a longer stay sometime in the not too distant future. For now we have to catch a train to Geneva. John was a hero again and carried my big heavy black bag all the way from the apartment to the train station which was about a 20 minute walk. Mostly downhill this time. Our journey consisted of two pretty long train rides, first from Zermatt to Visp, and then from Visp to Geneva. And the early part was beautiful, very scenic. Uh, and then we started getting into the more urban areas as we got closer to Geneva. We got off at the train station, which is adjacent to the Geneva airport, because the hotel actually has a shuttle from the airport to the hotel. So that seemed like the most convenient way to finish the last leg of our trip to the hotel. Yeah, we had to wait quite a while, but it was still probably more efficient than trying to get a cab or an Uber. It was uh, madhouse traffic-wise outside of the airport. Yeah. Well, thank you. After getting settled into the hotel, uh, the next morning, we decide to go out for our first adventure in Geneva, which is heading out to visit CERN. Luckily, the tram station right next to the hotel took us directly to CERN. Yeah, the tram station, again, another example of Swiss public transportation. So convenient, so easy, easy on, easy off, many stops. Uh, made this journey very simple for us. We wanted to participate in the tour of CERN. Um, one of the things that we learned, though, is that the only way to do that is to stand in line an hour prior to the actual tour uh, to get a ticket. There's no way to book it online. It was a pretty long wait for us, but we really wanted to take part in this and it ended up being worth it. Once we filled out the paperwork for our tickets, we had an hour to kill, so we went and watched the movie uh, that gave us some background on CERN, and we also went across the street to check out the globe. Before the tour, we just got a cursory look at the globe. We didn't get to go very far in before it was time for us to gather in order to start the tour. So we made a commitment that we were going to come back and look at it uh, more extensively. The tour was given by an actual physicist who I'm sure drew a short straw in a pool somewhere. Um, but we all headed out very excited to learn more about CERN. Yeah, it's interesting. They have a lot of inside knowledge, a lot of innate knowledge of what goes on there. And so there were a couple times where she was presenting stuff historically that was perfectly clear. Other times it was probably a little bit hard to follow. And I'm sure it, it just was something that uh, was much more technical and she was trying to dumb it down for us. But uh, just an interesting experience. Yeah. The first stop was the old collider. Uh, which is no longer in service. They just have it there. Yeah, the synclocyclotron, cyclotron, uh, which was the first major machine to, I don't know that they collide. collided, but they separated particles so that they could start to measure 
the difference. Obviously, the technology has advanced all the way up to the Large Hadron Collider. The collider itself, of course, is underground, and despite us asking to see it, we were not able to see it. Uh, apparently, once every five years, they do maintenance, and at that point in time, you can go and see it if you wish to. Yep, maintenance and upgrades are the five years. They do maintenance every year. But every five years, they actually implement all the updates that they've designed. We were in the control room or just outside the control room for that. It's running collisions and experiments all the time. And they were tracking how many particles were collided and how many Higgs boson particles were detected as well. The tour was fascinating and actually whetted our appetites for more information, so we headed over to the globe. smarter we decided to take the tram back uh, not directly to the hotel we had one stop to make one of the problems that I've had throughout this trip is that I didn't bring a backpack I'd packed my computer and other essentials in like a carry-on type of a bag um, it was actually an old work back of mine so we decided to stop by the store and see if we could find a backpack that would meet my needs and we did our hotel was more on the outskirts of Geneva, which was very convenient for visiting CERN, but we wanted to go downtown, so we caught the tram on the second day to go and see uh, downtown Geneva. It was the opposite direction from CERN. Yeah, but it wasn't a very long tram ride. It was only about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, and that dropped us off at a station that uh, was probably a half mile away from where we wanted to go, which was the United Nations Plaza. What we're seeing here is a sculpture called the Broken Chair, which is a tribute to the victims of landmines. Just down the road from the United Nations Plaza is a huge conservation garden. And this is so typically Swiss, just to find a beautiful garden in the middle of the city. that you could actually follow this down to the lake so that's what we did.
I was really excited when we got to see uh, Jet de uh, uh, from afar. It's one of the symbols of the city of Geneva. This is one of the tallest fountains in the world. It was originally the result of a hydraulic plant just releasing excess water that they had, but it became such a symbol, they relocated it to the center of the lake and increased the power to make it into a spectacular show. One of the things we learned was that when the winds get high, they actually shut it off. So it kind of disappeared on us for about 20 minutes. I was happy then they turned it back on. We also found this really pretty fountain, which I'm guessing hasn't set any world records, but it's really, really cute. It's just regular. <laughs> it's not just regular. It's very pretty. And you can see it along with the jet de uh. We also took a picture in front of the famous flower clock uh, and then decided to start heading back to the hotel. We enjoyed Geneva, and we appreciated a lot of what we got to see here. I think what struck me is how much more French this city is than Zurich. And you could feel it in a variety of ways, not just the language, but also just kind of the demeanor of people. This was our last stay in Switzerland, and I was so very impressed with the Swiss in the country of Switzerland. Truly an amazing place. The only con is that it is a little bit expensive. Um, but now we're heading back to France. Uh, we're heading to Lyon. <laughs> <laughs>